am I supposed to look like when I'm in here? Just like, really like a baby, like mm -hmm. a big Middle Eastern baby. Coming down here. Ah, big baby Laven. Oh, 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 this is amazing. I'm stuck. What's up, Fobs? Hold on. What's up, Fobs? Ah. Oh my God. Thank you. Pull. Ah. Yeah. All right. Yo. What's up, Fobs? So from season one, our producer and burrito carrier David Laven got fat as shit. Please take this footage and compare it to last year. And today, we came to Dearborn, Michigan, which has the highest concentration of Middle Eastern people outside of the Middle East. And we're going to one of their favorite places for coffee and desserts and pastries in the morning. And later on, we will go to Wild Wednesdays. Oh man, you're gonna love the pastries and coffee here. It's gonna be delicious. Then you're gonna shit your face off, dude. <laughs> coffee and shitting my face off. This is the spot in the neighborhood, most well known. It's kind of the veneros of this hood for dessert. A lot of these desserts here all utilize a lot of the same ingredients. You're gonna see a lot of walnuts, you're gonna see a lot of pistachios, and that same rose water syrup is on top of everything. I like Middle Eastern desserts because there's a lot of nuts. Pause. Here we go. Breakfast at Shatila. The first thing we had here was recommended by someone in line. It's like a fried goat cheese with a chow mein situation on top and a little rose water syrup. Really fucking good. Mm. It reminds me of halloumi. A little pistachio cream and maraschino cherry here. Get a little cashew. They call that cream, but it almost comes off like yogurt. You see the texture of it? It's thick and it's fluffy. This here is again, you see the utilization of the same ingredient. The pan fried kind of noodle, crushed walnuts on the inside, syrup on the outside. Mmm, it's crazy. It's like eating a pan fried noodle bite filled with nuts. This thing looks wild and crazy. Um, this is more chow mein. These motherfuckers love chow mein. Mmm. This is kind of like the OD chow mein baklava. This thing is so thick and dense. It's just straight a pile of nuts, a critical mass of nuts. Pistachio affirmative action in some chow mein wrap. I gotta say, you come to Shadila, everything's pretty good. Nuts all around, coffee to go. We're ready for Wild Wednesdays. I'll take you there. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good, I'm cold. I'm Eddie, by the way. I'm Suhaila. It's nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. This is Wild Wednesdays. So yeah. on Wednesdays, they slash their prices and you know, as a community, we buy in bulk. Nobody goes to buy two or three tomatoes. Yeah. No, that's cool. This is like Middle Eastern Costco. Yes. <laughs> this particular market offers what you would find in your basic supermarket as yeah. well as in any ethnic market as well. Most of the time in New York, these are Israeli cucumbers. I knew they weren't going to call them Israeli cucumbers here. Wow, this really is a traffic jam. That's a lot of mangoes. <laughs> wow, look at these almonds. Green, Green almonds. almonds are something that the community is very big on eating. Yeah. Olives are a staple in Middle Eastern culture, so this is something that you'll find on everybody's table, whether yeah. it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or even a snack. These are eggplants that are filled with garlic. Mm -hmm. Pickled mango. How is that? You gotta try this pickled mango guy. Wow. It's snappy like an Israeli cucumber or a neighborhood cucumber, but it has that tartness and sweetness of a mango. This brings in not only the Iraqi Muslim community, but the Iraqi Chaldean and Assyrian community as well that live in the suburbs of Metro Detroit. It's a good note. Pickled mango brings Iraqis to the yard. <laughs> this is the hot food area. Whole Foods got nothing on this shit. Look at this falafel. It looks like hush puppies. Freshly made. These grape leaves wrap tight like green optimals. The, the hand style. And what's and the baked kibbe? Wow, you're good. You know you're kibbe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And Middle Eastern food to me is very interesting. I'm guessing it's attributed because the traders back in the day, everybody moved back and forth from there. But you taste a little bit of the things from Spain with a little bit of that tomato and a little chili. 
the spinach pie seems like, you know, like, like Greek food as well, but there's so many things converging when you eat Arabic food, I love it. You could go ahead, you could go ahead, no worries, please. You're Lebanese? Yes. Nice. My family's from Lebanon. So what do you do in the city? I am a judicial executive in yeah. the city of Dearborn for the 19th District Court, and I'm the president of the Lebanese American Heritage Club. Nice. The extraordinary thing about the city of Dearborn, and people actually came to do a study on the city because when the economic downturn came, Dearborn was still flourishing. People, instead of closing shop, we were opening doors. Yeah. So when you saw the downturn, people, and they'd lost their auto jobs, mm -hmm. they reinvested in their communities. In their communities, and started buying up real estate, building. Yeah. Now you can't touch a piece of land in, in East Dearborn without nice. you know paying a good chunk of money for it. Whereas well, before it was a ghost town when I was growing up. We hear all about the problems about Detroit, right? But you never really hear too much about the solutions. When a city is down on its luck and property is cheap, it is a big opportunity for immigrants to come and build your own community because American people's trash is immigrant treasure. And that's very true. And if you don't invest within your own, nobody's going to help you. So yeah. that's what this community did. They built themselves from the ground up. So how do you guys all know each other? I've known Ali since he was a child, because I know his family very well. Yeah. Hussein is the head of our youth leadership committee okay. for the Lebanese American Heritage Club. And this young man knows Hussein, so we've been able to connect through one another. It's cool that you guys understand the importance, though, of like kind of planting your flag here and being involved in the politics in this country. It took a lot, it was a longer process to be able to change this mentality. This mentality was changed in two major events, back in the election of 2008 and the election of 2012 was the major, major head. Uh, in 2008, the American community started to know the importance of uh, being part of, of taking part in the election and the importance of uh, was making the policies and how you vote will affect that uh, that process. Yeah. Now, just to give you a background, Judge Sam Salami is the first Arab and Muslim judge to be elected into Dearborn Courthouse. And this is something wow. with a community that has been here since the 70s. And no yeah. representation. We've had a struggle trying to get people into yeah. political office. The Asian community also has had that for a long time. You're very prevalent economically. You're part of the skilled workforce, but you're not part of the political representation. Okay. We actually had another story set up with an Iraqi family here that bugged out and didn't want to do it because of the Boston bombing. Every news station seems to want to connect them with Islam. And I was watching, I was like, these are just two crazy motherfuckers. Like, they're crazy <laughs> and they don't represent anybody, but they're, they're crazy ass selves, you know? And like, how do incidents like that affect your guys' consciousness? If you want to know if a religion supports terrorism, I mean, it's just common sense to go back to the book of the religion. So yeah. what's ironic is that the religion that's labeled as the religion of the sword doesn't have the word sword mentioned once within its book. You would consider a religion that was spread by the sword to teach you how to use a sword, when to use it, who to use it against, but not once is the word safe, sword, used in the Quran. And that, that really says a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It shows there's some hidden agendas in the picture. I'm, I'm not Christian, I'm not Muslim, and I'm not Jewish, but watching it as a third party, objective bystander, there's so much crossover, all three just feel like Judd Apatow films. Like, I feel like you got the same actors in a lot of these movies. <laughs> in Islam, we believe in all of these major figures in Christianity and Judaism are actually prophets to us because they came with a message or they came continuing a message. Muhammad is the least mentioned prophet in the Quran. Jesus wow. mentioned 28, Moses 130, Abraham about 60, Muhammad exactly. only four times. So this wow. really shows Muhammad isn't seen as, you know, we don't, we're not biased in saying he's the best of prophets. Yeah. He's simply the one who came and put the cherry on top and made the Sunday complete. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yo, I love how you got the stats. You know, you like the saber metrics of the Quran, you know what I mean? Do you mind if I ask you how old you are? Yeah, no, no problem, 19. This is very inspirational to me to see somebody of your age so engrossed in his culture, proud of it, knowledgeable about it. Why is it that in your personal mind, like what is it 
the, why do you care so I mean, deeply? When you see that Islam is being defamed yes. as a religion, I think you have two options. Either you become angry or you strive to change the perception of Islam, which is basically channeling your anger through a productive, a productive channel. Iraqi Jedi, cheers guys. It's really, really, really great to meet you guys. I'm glad people are saying these things. People just have so much more in common than we think or we realize. And it's just really cool to see that these feelings and these experiences as Americans transcend neighborhoods. They transcend races, they transcend cultures, and it's really a human condition. This love for the culture that you come from and the natural human feeling to defend it and make sure that it's being represented correctly it's very inspirational to come to Dearborn and see these people who care this much about their culture plant their flag in America and telling people as loud as they can who the fuck they are. This is what I wanted to see. I wanted to come to an ethnic neighborhood in America and see people own the shit and make it really known. I'm an American, I'm an Iraqi, I'm Lebanese, and I'm here. Fuck with me, all right? Fresh off the boat, we out. Next up on Fresh Off The Boat. How did you end up here? Well, it's a long story. I was, uh, my housing situation was deteriorating. I decided that, well, maybe I will move in after all, you know. Yeah. And then I find out it's a blessing because I could reflect on my past, you know, maybe see where I might have uh, done things wrong, you know, like my kids and my family. And, you know, I'd look at the things that I did and it could have done better, you know. And How long have you been here? I've been here seven years. Seven years? Yeah. That's a lot of reflecting. Yeah.